Hi friends, we're going to actually do a, do a lesson uh, from home, me teaching you a lesson from home and see how this goes. So hopefully you'll get the idea of what it is we're talking about as you're filling out the notes and then when you come to class we'll be able to ask questions and also do some more activities that are more fun than just note taking hopefully. I want to review what an integer is. This came from our one four notes. It's important that you understand this word because you'll see it a lot in word problems and SAT questions. So let's review an integer is a counting number. Whoa, get my pen going here. It's a counting number. It's opposite. and the guy in the middle, and zero. So basically, it's all the red dots on a number line, the standard number line that's up in your classroom. So it includes negative numbers, positive numbers, and zero, but not decimals, not fractions, just the nice big round numbers for us. So in 1.5 and 1.6, we're going to talk about adding and subtracting positive and negative integers. And I kind of just call this combining them. I don't care really whether you're adding them or subtracting them. Basically, we're just trying to get them together. So we're going to start out in our problems, and we're going to look and see if we have double signs, two signs next to each other. If we do, we're not going to start the problem. We're not going to do anything in the problem until we've con condensed those double signs into one sign. How do we do that? We look and see if the signs are the same. We use the sum sign, which is a plus sign. We drop the two signs and make it just one sign. If the signs are different, we use the different sign, which is the subtraction sign. So we'll do a little bit of this uh, using a number line, and we'll do some without a number line. So the first two examples we're going to do are using a number line to combine some signed integers. So we ask ourselves on example number one, do I have any double signs in this problem? And yes, I do. I see a plus sign and I see a negative sign. So that's a problem. We want just a single sign. So we're going to ask ourselves, how do we make these two double signs a single sign? We go back to our rules. We say the signs are different. I've got a plus sign and a negative sign. If the signs are different, drop the double sign and just make it one sign that's the difference sign. So now this looks a little bit neater and cleaner and now we're going to use a number line to actually combine these two numbers. We're going to start at positive 6. 6 is positive. Even though you don't write his plus sign out there, we know he's positive. We're going to start at positive 6 on the number line right here. And we're going to go 7 in the negative direction, 7 units to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this is our answer, which happens to be negative 1. Let's try it with the second example. I do see a double sign. There's two negatives. I've got to rewrite this problem with a single sign before I can use the number line. I see the signs are the same. Kind of looks like a little face with two eyeballs. The signs are the same. If the signs are the same, use the sum sign, the positive sign. So we're going to rewrite it, negative 1 plus 9. Now we're ready to go to our number line. We're going to start at negative 1 on the number line, right here, negative 1. And we're going to go 9 in the positive direction, or to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And after we've done 9 hops to the right, we're on positive 8. So our answer to exercise number 1 was negative 1, where we ended up. And the answer to number 2 was positive 8. Let's do one more. Don't have any double signs, so we don't have to go through that step. We're going to start at negative 11 on the number line, which I believe is right here. We're going to go six spots to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and now we're here, but now we need to go four spaces back to the left, one, two, three, four, and we end up right here, which happens to be negative nine. So this is kind of hopping around on a number line, 
and we can certainly do that, but it's not always convenient to draw a number line. So we want to, uh, we want to practice some problems without using the number line also. So the pro problems we're going to do without a number line look just like the ones we did with a number line, but we're not going to draw the number line. We're going to look for our double signs. So I keep losing my pen. Look for double signs. Do I have any? Yes, I do. I have a positive and a negative. So I'm, they, the signs are different. I'm going to use the different sign. And now I'm going to say in my mind what happens when I start at positive 6 on the, on the number line, but I go 7 in the other direction. What I'm actually doing is saying I'm taking 7, subtracting 6, getting 1, and the 1 is negative because 7 is bigger than 6. On the second example, I see a double sign. Here they are. They're the same, so I'm going to replace it with a sum sign. Now I'm starting in my mind at negative 14 on the number line. I'm coming back 9, but I'm not quite to 0 yet. I'm still in the negative direction. So I can think of this as 14 minus 9 that I've come back, which is 5, but the 5 is negative because the 14 is bigger than 9. If we look at one that's got three numbers, like example number three, we don't have any double signs. That's good. So we can just start our hopping in our mind on the number line. I'm at negative 11. I come back 6. I'm now at negative 5. Now I'm at negative 5 on the number line, and I want to go left, getting more negative on the number line, and I'm at negative 9. And on number four, I do have some double signs. There they are, right there. The signs are different. So tell me which sign I'm going to use. Oh, yeah, you're not in class. I have to do it myself. The different sign. And now I'm ready to start the hopping in my mind. I'm starting at positive 27. I take away 16. That leaves positive 11. I want to go positive in the positive direction, 12 more. And that leaves 23. Now, I've got a couple problems. I want you to pause the video and go ahead and do those yourself. And when you come back, we're going to do a couple evaluates, which means we plug it in, plug it in. Remember, you're going to write these neatly. D is negative 3. So when you come down here to plug it in, this negative sign comes down. The D we're going to put in parentheses and plug in the negative 3 for D. Now we're going to ask ourselves, do we have any double signs? Sure enough, we do. There's a pair right there. I made a little happy face. The signs are the same. We're going to use the sum sign. Now we ask ourselves, where are we on the number line? We're at negative 15. We come back to the right a small amount. 15 minus 3 is 12, but it's negative 12. One more, plug it in, plus minus 7D. Take care of your double sign before you plug it in, plug it in. My signs are different, so I'm going to use the different sign. Remember that 7D means 7 multiplied times D. So now we're going to do our substitution step, and we're going to plug in for D. We're going to plug in the negative 3. So this becomes 8 minus, and 7 times minus 3 is a minus 21. Oh dear, I've got two signs. They're the same. I'm going to use the plus sign. And I end up with 29 as the answer. I want to go through just a couple more examples with you, and then you'll be able to do a little bit of work in your book. Let's look at a real-life example. You've got a checking account. Your balance, that means what you start with. Balance is a good thing, if it's, as long as it's positive. You start with $95. You withdraw, that's one of those subtraction words we talk about, $32. Deposit, $80. Add back and withdraw $25. This is an expression using integers, which we just did, to represent your transactions. Now it says what's your final balance. So essentially, 
we're going to go hopping on the number line in our mind, but thank goodness we don't have to draw a number line because these are really big numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do, because we have addition and subtraction, and in the order of operations, we go, if that's all we have, we go back to the beginning of the problem. I'm going to do this piece. I'm at positive 95 on the number line. I go back to the left, 32 steps. So essentially, I am at positive 63. And now I'm going to keep on, keep on keeping on. Now I'm at positive 63 on the number line, and I go positive 80 more. Now I'm at positive 143. But I come back a little bit to the left, so I subtract, and I get 118. So my final balance should be $118, which isn't too bad. I've made some money. Last thing I want to talk to you about, um, I'll let you do the football, this number 10, on your own. And we'll talk about it in class. It's a similar, uh, a similar problem to the deposit withdrawal money. But the last thing I want to talk to you about pretty quick was look at number 9, 10, and 11. And I want you to just look at these and tell me what the sign of your answer is going to be without actually working it. So I want you to think about that for a minute. If we look at number 9, we've got big negative number here and another negative number over here. Eights are positive number. We're not going to be able to come back out of the negatives with just a positive 8 if we've got a negative 17 and a negative 6. So I don't know what the answer is going to be to that problem, but the, the sign of the answer is going to be negative. On number 10, well, we've got some positive numbers here, but we've got negative numbers here and negative numbers here, and those look pretty much bigger than our 14. So again, I think the sign of my answer is going to be negative. And for number 11, it's pretty easy. I've got lots of positive numbers going on, not too many negatives, so I'm going to have a positive answer. One last little tidbit, and we're going to do this in class, is the sum of any number and its opposite. So for instance, 3 and negative 3, negative 2 and positive 2, 5 and negative 5. If you add a number and its opposite together, what do you get? zero. Anytime you add a number and its opposite, you get zero. So here are some examples that we just created. And that's an important math property called the additive inverse property. And when it's written mathematically, it's written like this. Can you all guess what the A stands for? stands for any number. So any number plus its opposite always adds to zero. And we're going to do a little fun activity with that in class. Thanks for listening. Go back and listen again if you need to or if you need to fill in some of the blanks. See you in class.